Schedule our appointment for another day. Okay, Dr. Powell. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Hello. Uh, keep these doorways clear, people. Come on, come on, come on. Good. good morning. See you at the award ceremony. Hello. I want to talk to you about that, Susan. Good, thanks. Good morning. Uh, walk. Hello. Janet. Good morning, Miss Collins. Good morning. I can't believe we're having this conversation. You promised not to get upset about every little thing. Yeah, well, that was Monday. Today is Thursday. What happened now? Oh, I asked for critiques like it's sound bites. You know, Shakespeare sucks, so Shakespeare's cool. But any time I ask them why, I get shrugs. You know what you need? Oh, please, not another blind date. No, you need a real vacation at spring break. And I just got this brochure for a terrific trip to Mexico. No, I'm not crazy about the heat. Janet, you are in such a rut. This is your problem. Come on, think about it. It would be fun. Okay, look, I, I really, I gotta go. Are you sure you can't join us? No, one of the girls I'm counseling made senior achiever, so I have to get over to the ceremony. Ah, you been to one of these before? Nope, first time, why? Pretty hokey. I kind of like hokey. Okay, but don't say I didn't warn you. Thank you. Is this on? Uh-huh. Okay, let's get started. First of all, I'd like to welcome... Mr. Michaels, we'd like to begin. Get me all the names. I'm sure he'll have a very good excuse. All right, where were we? Well, there goes our starting catcher for Saturday's game. Twice a year. Just for that? Dr. Powell likes to set an example. Cindy Webster. Congratulations, Cindy. Good work. Matthew Liu. I think this is terrific. The other schools in this district should do and the Emily same thing. Emily McDonald. Our senior achievers. Thank you all for coming. Students, take whatever time's left in this period with your guests, but remember, today is still a school day. Thank you. I'll see you later. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye. Hey, Cindy. Let me see. This is great. Thanks. Miss Collins, do you think I could come see you this afternoon? Sure you can. After seventh period? That'd be fine. Is there something you want to talk to me about now? Miss Collins. No, I've got class. Thanks, though. Congratulations again, Cindy. Thank you, Dr. Powell. Excuse me. Right, young lady. Mm -hmm. What did you think? 
I was just telling Barbara Shields I think it's terrific. I think these kids need all the encouragement we can give them. That's how I feel. By the way, I think I may have found you an office. Really? Oh, that'd be great. I haven't had the kind of privacy necessary to... Well, I mean, the teacher's lounge has been all right. <laughs> You've been very patient. To be honest, since you were new here, I wanted to wait and see how things worked out, but I've been impressed with your hard work and attitude. So I'm uh, kicking you downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll speak with you later. Good. Thanks again. You bet. Like I told your daughter, I will talk to Mrs. Cohen about a makeup test, but you've got to do your part, too. Yeah, listen, you've got to make sure that she does at least an hour of homework every day. No, I know. If she tells you that she doesn't have any homework, then you call Mrs. Cohen right there in front of her. Yeah. Uh, look, Tara's a good kid. You just got to stay on top of her. Okay, bye. So what do you think of my new luxurious setting? It's okay. Did your mom come to the ceremony today? Uh, no, she had to work. So sit down. What's going on? Miss Collins, I don't know what to do. About what? Cindy, you can talk to me. You can tell me anything. That's why I'm here. Miss Collins, I'm in so much trouble. Are you pregnant? No. Look, Dr. Powell's been really nice to me and my mom. He even helped her get that teacher's aid job at Henry Hudson Elementary. Right, I remember you telling me that. Go on. Dr. Powell has told me that he would help me get into college. He was going to write me recommendations and stuff if I, uh... if I was nice back to him. What did he mean by... nice? Dr. Powell is always calling me into his office. Just asking me how I am and stuff. And telling me how pretty I am. And wondering what it would be like to kiss me. And, uh, and I don't know what to do. Cindy, have you been physical with Dr. Powell? No, but he wants me to, uh... He wants me to go to bed with him. And he says it's all right because I just turned 18. And that it's okay if... It's not okay. It's never okay under these circumstances. He gave me this. He told me to buy myself something, a present, anything I wanted. Have you talked to your mother? No, I can't do that, and neither can you. Now, you promised me that anything we ever talked about in here was just between you and me. It's true. That's absolutely true, but something like this is Look, just... Look, I don't want to sleep with him. I mean, I'm not a virgin or anything, but it's, it's like you said, this just isn't right. It's not, and that's why you have to tell your mom. It's way too important for her not to know. What if he calls me into his office? Okay, look, it's last period, so just go straight home, all right? And then tomorrow morning, you come and see me first thing. 
Don't go anywhere near Dr. Powell's office. Okay. Listen, you're not alone in this, Cindy. I'm here for you. We'll work it out, okay? It'll be all right. Sarah, do you understand how serious these allegations are? Yes, I do. That's why I'm here. I've never had to deal with something like this before. I'm just not sure what to do. Do you believe her? I have no reason not to. The girl's had emotional problems. She is in counseling. I know that, and the family's been through a messy divorce, and there's been money problems, and... But she is... She has always been very honest with me. There's no chance she misinterpreted an innocent gesture, affectionate even, from an older man? Alicia, I think she'd know the difference. It's not like she's 13. Okay, I'll look into it. So what does that mean? I don't know. Gordon Powell is a very important man. We have to be very careful if he's guilty, even more so if he's innocent. I didn't write this for my health, people. Jeffrey, save the doodles for art class. I mean it. You copying this down? Don't do what I do. I... I want to hear those pins scratch the paper. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. Okay. Cindy, you want it in the office? You better take your books with you, too. Class will be over pretty soon. Okay, so I want all of this written down. So we'll start with Sonity. Cindy, did you hear what I said? Yeah. Start with all of Sonnet 18. I want you to learn it, study it, and be prepared to discuss its meaning tomorrow. No, I know you're breaking my heart. Okay, shh, shh. Hey, settle down. We still got some time left. So meaning is very important. You can get your lexicons out of the library if you don't have your copies. I can't believe it. I mean, there have been rumors about him and some of the teachers, but never the students. He's too smart. I, I just can't believe it. Well, you think I want to believe it? This is the best school I've ever worked at. What if he is sexually harassing a student? I just think this is the kind of thing that would leak out. I mean, they may love him at the Board of Ed, but Gordon Powell is not very popular with the students. They think he's like a warden. Yeah, who rules with an iron fist. That kind of power can be very intimidating. Have you talked to Cindy today? No, she was supposed to come to my office this morning. She didn't show up. Well, she's here, in fact. What? The office had her called out of my lit class this morning. Not a word of this to anyone. Cindy, I'm trying to help you. You shouldn't be shy or embarrassed by that. I want to see you get into a good college. I want you to get that scholarship we talked about. Dr. Powell. Don't. Don't leave.
thought you were coming to see me. Look, I tried to do what you said. I tried to stay away from him. <laughs> but he had me in his office, and he started kissing me. And I told him to stop. I told him I would tell him. <laughs> and he just laughed. And then he started touching me. Where did he touch you? Honey, let me take you home. You shouldn't be here right now. Trouble, Miss Collins? I mean, why else would you come out here like this? Yes, Mrs. Webster, she is. But it's not her fault. It seems that... Okay, we'll I have reason to believe that Cindy may have been sexually molested by Gordon Powell, the principal of Cascade. That's impossible. Not if you heard what Cindy told me. Cindy told you this. I can't... I can't be. I, look, I'll have a talk with her as soon as I get home. I don't know why she'd say a thing like this. Mrs. Webster, I believe Cindy's story. No. Dr. Powell has been so kind and generous. My job here, and anything so highly of Cindy, he's helping her to get into college. It, it's got to be a mistake. Mrs. Webster, Cindy needs your help right now. She needs your support. I know that this is a tough thing for you, but try to think of what she must be going through. Cindy's not as innocent as you think, Miss Collins. She was a handful even before the divorce. I understand that. She's never struck me as a liar. But this is... it's crazy. It's... I know. It's a terrible situation. But it's something that we have to deal with. Especially you. Please go and speak with her. Hear what she has to say. I also think you should keep her home from school tomorrow, at least until this is resolved. I really can't believe this. Yeah, he was starting that night. Thank you. Oh, great. So what are you suggesting? Well, I think we've gone from possible harassment to real abuse here. Then for starters, we should transfer Cindy to Garfield High. Why? It solves the immediate problem, our concern for Cindy's welfare, and it gives us time to plan a proper investigation. But then we are treating Cindy like she's the guilty party. She's the victim here. I mean, uprooting her this close to graduation. You're right. It's not fair. But under the circumstances, it's pretty damn reasonable. Look, we have a student with a history of emotional problems making a charge that could destroy a man respected throughout the school system. What's being done about Dr. Powell? That is being decided by bigger fish than me. Sarah, we are doing everything we can. You've done everything you can. I hope so. I got a call at home this morning from Barbara Shields. I'm supposed to fill out an evaluation form on Cindy Webster, deliver it to the office ASAP. Why? Well, she wouldn't say. Nancy Romano got the same call. Cindy has her for man. But does anybody else at the school know about, you know, what you told me? Not that I'm aware of, no. Cindy, what are you doing here? I thought I told your mother to keep you home. I'm not supposed to talk to you. Cindy? Look, you promised you wouldn't tell anybody. I shouldn't have ever even told you. Now everything is worse. Did your mother contact the school? Don't you get it? Nobody can help me. Just leave me alone. Dr. Powell wants to see you in his office right away. Well, I have an appointment with a student for counseling. Cancel it. I, I can't. Please tell Dr. Powell I'll be there as soon as I can. Tell him yourself. Father doesn't care about your grades. 
Maybe. I don't know. I mean, he's always saying he needs my help with this story, you know? I'll have a talk with him. <laughs> yeah, good luck. I mean, it's like my dad's way or the highway, you know? I mean, that's what he's always saying. Oops, I'm sorry. It's all right, we were just finishing. And, uh, how is everything, David? Okay, Dr. Powell. Good. I, uh, wanted to see you. Just working out okay? Yes, yes, it is. Thank you. I was just, uh, coming to see you right after David. Well, I guess you know why I want to talk to you. Not really. Well, I had a very disturbing phone call last night from Cindy Webster's mother. And what really bothers me most is you didn't trust me enough to talk to me first. Well, Dr. Powell, you have to understand my position. I have an obligation to maintain confidentiality. Miss Collins, I do understand your position, but you also have an obligation to me. This is my school. This is my career we're talking about. I mean, really, wild allegations coming from a, a mixed-up girl who somehow sees professional concern for sexual attraction. Well, like I said, I have an obligation to be able to... to stop you from going to social services. <laughs> Bad news travels very fast. Well, I'm sorry, but I tried to follow procedure. Some of these kids are very good liars. Perhaps that's because we want to believe them. So are you saying that you did not make any sexual advances to Cindy Webster? That's exactly what I'm saying. Exactly. So. Let's put our heads together and come up with a plan for getting Cindy past this. She deserves our help. Hey, Dr. Powell? Yes. Cindy says you gave her this. Sarah, I've been happily married for 19 years. You really think I'd risk everything by doing something as stupid as that? I don't know. That's too bad. For your own good, I think you better know. And you better know quick. My friend's got a car. I saw you sitting here, so I didn't want you to My mom's picking me up. Can she get a off with me? Sure. <laughs> Someone said you were leaving, transferring or something. It's not definite, but maybe. Well, before you go, you want to get together or something? Okay. <laughs> Is that honking for you, Miss Lindstrom? I guess. And tell him if I hear it again, I'll revoke his parking permit. I don't know why you're doing this, Cindy. I'm very disappointed. Very disappointed. Cindy won't even speak with me, but at least I don't think Powell's foolish enough to try anything now. 
You know what I don't understand is how does everybody here know? Oh, try Barbara Shields. I bet she even told the janitor. Look, you gotta give the staff some time. I mean, this thing will die down and everything will be forgotten. Did I miss something here? Why did I suddenly turn into the local pariah? Because a lot of teachers think Gordon Powell is a terrific principal. Not if he's molesting his students. I mean, you can't tell me everybody here wants to suddenly sweep this under the rug. Look, the problem is nobody believes it. No, the problem is nobody wants to believe it. Look, I mean, this thing is over, right? You protected the girl. Why don't you try protecting yourself for change? Janet, how can it be over? We're talking about attempted rape. Maybe. Okay, okay, look, for argument's sake, let's say Cindy is telling the truth. What do you want? Well, I don't want another Cindy in my office six months from now. I mean, if I didn't care about these kids, I would have gone into banking. Oh, God. What's the matter? Look, he's staring right at us. Did you bring this up with social services? Yes, but they haven't taken any action. Well, this is a very tricky business. Well, I feel strongly that we need to investigate this incident. But the girl hasn't even filed a complaint. That's because she's been so intimidated. And what if you're wrong? What if she made all of this up? What does that do to Gordon Powell? Well, with all due respect, Mr. Barker, everybody seems a lot more concerned about Dr. Powell than the real victim, Cindy Webster. Believe me, Miss Collins, the issue here is fairness. No, sir. The issue here is a possible criminal abuse of power. How can you not investigate? I admire your dedication, Miss Collins. And I assure you, I will do everything to look into this matter. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for your time. Mary? Yes, sir? Get me Gordon, Paul. Ms. Collins, I've decided to do an evaluation of your work. I'll need all your student files and any notes you may have in your possession. You can't do that. Yes, I can. Until my evaluation is complete, you will discontinue counseling or any action related to counseling that includes home visits and phone calls. How am I supposed to do my job? You'll have no contact with students, parents, or faculty members concerning students without my permission. Am I supposed to just sit here all day and do nothing? No, I want a written account of your activities, including every interaction you've had with students since the semester began. That should keep you busy. One more thing. I was mistaken in assigning you this storeroom. We need it back immediately. Where am I supposed to go? Anywhere you won't be in the way. You were warned. Within his rights as principal. What about my rights? What about my students' rights? Don't be so naive, Sarah. You don't mess with someone like Gordon Powell without getting stuck. If I hear one more person talk about Gordon Look, Powell like he's the I know you don't want to hear this, but if I were you, I would think about taking some time off. No way. I am talking about a leave of absence. It won't reflect on your record, I promise. I won't quit, and I will not let him drive me away. Now, just tell me, do I have your support or don't I? That's what I thought. I appreciate you seeing me, Mr. Kearns. No problem. As Cindy's counselor, I have a right to file that memo with the school board asking for a formal investigation. Have you filed it yet? No, a teacher friend of mine wanted me to call the union and get some legal advice first, so... Smart friend. What I need to know is what am I up against? Trust me, you don't want to know. That bad? Yeah. Let me ask you, with all the budget cuts, how do you think the Cascade High still gets a new lunchroom and state-of-the-art computers? Because Dr. Powell has friends downtown, and that's because he knows where the bodies are buried. So what are you telling me, that I should forget it? 
No, I'm just saying that you could be heading for hell and back and still end up losing. I know the real Dr. Powell. He's mean, he's vindictive. Thank you for your Help. candor. Oh, hold on, where are you going? You know what I find so upsetting about this? Everybody's a lot more concerned about Dr. Powell than this girl whose whole life may have been ruined. Oh, wait, wait, is Miss Cop? Hello. No. Listen, can I get back to you real quick? Collins? Ms. Collins? Please wait. You didn't let me finish. Come on, hear me out. Look. If you go ahead and file that memo, you can bet that everything's going to hit the fan. So if you want to file it, and I think you should, I've got to know that when the going gets tough, that you're not going to quit on me. Does that mean you're going to represent me? Well, that's what I'm here for. Thank you. Like I said, I've had run-ins with Powell before, so none of this surprises me. Now, it sounds to me like you've got him scared, and that's going to make him even more dangerous. Well, he's already trying to discredit me. How? He's doing a so-called evaluation of my work. We can only guess what he'd find. Uh, no, that, that, that's not so bad, because an evaluation can be challenged. He has the burden of proof. All right, before we file that memo, we've got to get a statement from Cindy Webster confirming the abuse. Without that, we are nowhere. Are you sure you want to go through with this? Yeah. Maybe we should have called first. What? Ruin the surprise? Come on. Hi, Cindy. This is Frank Kearns. He's my attorney. My mother's in home right now. Um, actually, we, we came to talk to you. Cindy, I need for you to tell Frank everything you told me that day in the office. Look, nobody believes us. But I know that you were telling me the truth. She seemed to be giving Cindy ideas. Could you be more specific? negative ideas about Dr. Powell. That's not true. Okay. My daughter and I are extremely close. She's always told me everything. But she never told you about any sexual abuse by Dr. Powell. No. That's the main reason why I don't believe it happened. Are there any other questions? Thank you very much, Mrs. Webster. And would you please send Cindy in? Yes. Thank you. Stop, but you're making that case. I'm sorry. Cindy, if you'll just sit right there. Good. Now, we know that you're nervous, and there's nothing to be afraid of. Just tell us the truth, okay? Okay. Did you tell Miss Collins that you had received inappropriate sexual advances from Dr. Powell? Yes. And did any of those events actually occur? No. So you lied to Miss Collins? Yes. Why? I don't know. I'm sorry. Look, I know I've caused a lot of trouble here today. If it's all right, I'd really just like to transfer to another school to finish out the year. Mm -hmm. 
しまう。Obviously, it is the finding of this panel. That Dr. Powell has been wrongly accused and is totally blameless in this matter. I also believe that Dr. Powell deserves a formal apology from this board for having to suffer through this indignity. I would second that motion, certainly. But I would also ask that Ms. Collins make a similar apology to Dr. Powell. If, uh, if, if I may, I, uh, I appreciate your support, but no apologies. Are necessary. Uh, Miss Collins may have shown poor judgment, but she followed her conscience, and we should never fault anyone in our school system for doing that. Thank you very much, Dr. Powell. This hearing is adjourned. Congratulations. We won. Thank you. Well, I, uh, How could I have been so stupid? If I'd let social services transfer Cindy in the first place, she wouldn't have to go through all this mess. Look, I gotta run to a deposition, but call me later. We'll decide where we're gonna go from here. Go? Go where? It's over. He won. Well, I think that's up to you, isn't it? Why is it up to me? Well, if you still think that Cindy Webster was telling the truth, someone's got to stop Gordon Powell. Just, just call me. I just don't know what to do. What a mess. I mean, what, is Powell just going to have you sitting around all day doing nothing? Oh, no, I'm sure he's got some big plans for me. I'm grateful you told me to go talk to an attorney because if I can't prove that Powell molested Cindy Webster, I'm a dead duck. Whoa, whoa, hold on a second. You're not going to keep pushing this. I don't have a choice. Yes, you do. Cindy's gone. Powell's been cleared. Wrongly, maybe, but but won't. Look, I just don't want to see you go off in some fool's crusade and ruin your career. Janet, I still believe everything Cindy told me. Cindy changed your story. You're the only one who thinks Powell did it. So I'm a villain now? No. But you have been damaged with the staff. They like Powell. They like working at a school where they don't have to pass metal detectors on the way in. So it's okay to try to rape a student as long as you run a tight ship. Oh, will you stop it? Do you know what kind of heat I'm taking for being your friend? I'm sorry. It's just been... I'm sorry for even getting you caught up in this. Uh, you didn't. Don't even think about it. Look, there's something I've been meaning to tell you. There's a girl in my class last year, a senior. Powell used to call her into his office all the time. Why didn't you tell me this earlier? Because I didn't think anything of it. Once he asked me to up her grade from a C to a B, I didn't know what to do. She left school, though, so it didn't matter anymore. What was her name? Rachel. Rachel Morton.
I wish you weren't so persistent, Sarah. It really can be a problem. What are you doing here? That's exactly what I was about to ask you. Everyone else has gone home. Well, I've just lost track of time. I no longer have a regular schedule. We'll have to do something about that. I'd like to leave. I didn't want this to happen, Sarah. You brought this on yourself. I think it's the other way around. I used to think that together you and I could do some good for the school. That was my goal, too. It's not too late. We can make a new start. Get out of my way. Too bad. You don't know what you're missing. Is this how you bully young girls into sleeping with you? Not even a kiss goodbye. As of tomorrow morning, they're reassigned to Baxter Street Elementary. I understand some of the little kiddies there need help with their toilet training. You're not getting away with any of this. If that's so, then why am I still here? And you're gone. No. Why not? Because you'd lose. It's your word against his. And I'm obviously emotionally unstable with a compulsive need to destroy Pal's reputation. Exactly. Are you going to accept the transfer to Baxter? It's a good school. It's a demotion. It's humiliating. Well, maybe I should hire a lawyer, and then I could try to fight it. Well, now you're talking, but you're going to need a good one. You're right. I know it's humiliating. If I was the one that made the decision that I wanted to counsel younger kids, and that would have been one thing. But this way, it's like it's like being exiled or something. Everywhere I turn, Powell keeps winning. Well, that's why you have to keep fighting. Now, you report to the school, I'll file an appeal, and we'll track down that other girl. Okay. I can't stay. It's all right. I'm surprised to see you. Sarah, I just want you to know that I had nothing to do with your transfer. Powell went right over my head. I know that. But I think it's a good idea for you to be someplace else. I'm just sorry it had to happen this way. Well, thank you. The reason I came is your attorney has been asking questions about a former student at Cascade. Yeah, Rachel Morton. Here's her file. We have a copy of it because she was moved to a shelter for teenage girls during her senior year. Her home life was a disaster. Anyway, it's in the file. Wait a minute. You've believed me about Powell. You've believed me this entire time. That's not the point. I have a job to do. I was doing it when you first came to see me. And I'm doing it now. Hi. I'm looking for Ruth Ann Watkins. I'll get her. Shit. Come on. That's it. Paul? On Come on, Renee. Go ahead. Go to the Paul line. There's a lady over there. Okay. Get back. Hi, Ruth Ann. Who are you? Hi, I'm Sarah Collins. I'm a social worker. I'm looking for a girl that used to live here, Rachel Morton. Do you remember her? Sure do. Do you know where she is? 
I know where she is. But that doesn't mean I'm going to tell you. I could use your help on this, ma'am. I got to be up front with you. I'm no big fan of social services. You people like to get into other people's business, and I like to get things done. My girls ain't no statistics. They need help. Ma'am, I'm not here on official business. I'm trying to prevent something terribly wrong from happening again. I'm listening. Do you know who Gordon Powell is? Yes. I believe he may have been sexually involved with a number of female students at Cascade High, including Rachel. Would you know anything about that? I teach my girls to be adults, to take care of themselves. Once they leave, their business is their business. So even if you did know something, you wouldn't talk about it? That's right. But Rachel might. That'd be up to her. Would you contact her for me? She's married now. She's got a life of her own. She may not want to talk about the past. Well, could you just call her for me? That's all I'm asking. If she'll talk to you, I'll let you know. Please tell her that she's not the only one. Tell her we're trying to put a stop to it. Tell her that she could really help. seeing me on such short notice. No problem. Who's that? Robert James. We call him RJ. He is beautiful. Thank you. So you know why I'm here? See, my husband doesn't know about some of the things that happened to me before we met, and he wouldn't understand. I mean, he never hurt me or, or the baby or anything. He's not like that. Rachel, I won't repeat what you tell me unless you say I can. I just really need your help. Okay. Um, see, so yeah, I was having a lot of trouble at home with my stepdad and at school, you know, bad grades and stuff. And that's when Gordon said to me that he knew I'd had a tough time and he wanted to help. I mean, at first he was just friendly, you know, but uh, then it changed. How did it change? He started touching me, like asking me to give him a hug or, or sit on his lap. He, he said he was taking a really big risk changing my grades, and he hoped I'd be grateful. Finally, I figured out what he wanted. Sex. Yeah. Sometimes at motels, a couple of times at school. He especially liked it at school. He got off on it. The element of danger, you know, like somebody might walk in on us. He said I was smart enough to go to college. And he promised to help me. And it never happened. What did happen? He started seeing somebody else. Do you know who it was? No. I, I didn't see much point after that, so I dropped out. And then I met Rick. Here I am. Rachel. I'd like to help. I really would. You know, everybody thinks he's such a wonderful person, but he's not. And I know there were others before me. Rachel, I'm trying to stop him, but I can't do it unless you help me. I can't. Rachel? I gotta go. The girl after me was Terry Lindstrom. 
She's probably still there. You know, she hasn't dropped out. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, I always thought I really would have liked college. Hey, don't give up on it. You can always go back. Teen Harper, this is where Mother said she worked. She can't work here. She's underage. Well, as long as Terry brings home money, I don't think that mother cares what she does. This ought to be interesting. Let's get out of here. No, wait. There she is. Now, what can I get for you? Well, how about a light beer? It's two drink minimum. Hi, Terry. You're that social worker. You're the one that... Terry, I'm an attorney representing Miss Collins. Uh, I'd like to talk to you. Got nothing to say. You want to bust me for being underage? You go ahead. That's not why we're here. Someone gave us your name. Somebody that was with Pal before you were. Who? Well, it doesn't matter who. We promised her we wouldn't say. Oh, I knew there was somebody. I got to get back to work. Terry, would you be willing to make a statement about your relationship with Dr. Powell? Oh, is that what it was? It was a relationship. Terry? I gotta start getting ready. I'm dancing next. Would you at least think about giving us a statement? No. No way. Whatever happened, it is over. I want to get my diploma, and I want to get out. I don't need any more trouble. If you change your mind, Give me a call? Yeah, I'll be right there. Look, forget about what I said, okay? I need this job. I make pretty good money here. Please don't mess this up for me. Hey, Terry, you're up there. Come on, Ma. Tomorrow we're gonna see a friend of mine in the DA's office. Maybe she'll be interested. He's a predator, but he's very smart. He never targets nice middle-class girls. It's always troubled kids from broken families. He uses them, he lies to them, and then he dumps them for another victim. All the girls were 18 when the incident occurred? I think so. Well, that's a problem. Oh, come on, Ellen. We're talking sexual harassment here all the way up to rape. That's if we had a case. Look, you have three alleged incidents, and none of the girls are willing to provide corroboration. So we subpoena them. <laughs> That's the cart before the horse. You get me one statement, just one statement on the record, and I'll consider moving forward. Well, we had a statement from Cindy Webster, but she was so intimidated. Well, that's the other problem. Gordon Powell has a lot of power. Before I'm prepared to take him on, I want to be sure we have a good chance of winning. My guess is that Rachel Morton's our best bet. I think you should go back and try and push her. I can't. I can't go and turn her life upside down like that. It's not fair. Well, there's nothing fair about what Pal did to Terry or Cindy, either. No, but when I think about it with that baby, I just can't do it. I guess we'll just have to find another Friends. way, then. Mm -hmm. 
School sources say that longtime principal Cascade High, Dr. Gordon Powell, is a leading candidate to replace school superintendent Alan Mintz. Let me see that. We'll never get him now. Son of a bitch. Just a reminder, folks, the ferries leave the Southport dock every 15 minutes up until 5 o'clock. And then from 5 o'clock until 9 o'clock every half hour. Please keep your tickets for the return trip. Thank you. Okay, watch your steps, folks. Okay. I kind of miss Cascade, you know, I mean, before everything. Yeah, I understand. So how's your mom? She's okay. Listen, if you ever need to talk to me about anything, anything at all, no matter what, you just call, all right? Sure. Well, it's good to see you. yourself, Brett. Okay. Hi. Hi. Miss Collins? Miss Collins, I am so sorry about what happened. Cindy, it's okay. No, you know, it's really not. He kept telling me over and over again that I had imagined it. And my mother was there, and she kept telling me I imagined it too. And before I knew it, I didn't know what to believe. And so I just said what they wanted to hear. I figured that's what happened. I am so sorry. I really am. You were always so nice to me. I am so sorry. Cindy, I'm not mad at you. You're not? No. Cindy! I gotta go. Listen. Don't forget what I said. You call me any time. <laughs> you take care of yourself. Thank you. Hello? Mrs. Webster, hi. It's Sarah Collins. Yes? Listen, I just ran into Cindy, and it just seemed like there was something wrong. She didn't seem quite right. Are you aware of anything? Miss Collins, I want you to stay away from my daughter. Do you understand? Northwest Times, may I help you? Hi, I'm looking for Christina Beckett. Oh, that's her right over there. Thank you. The earliest I can get somebody there is 3 o'clock. Okay, if that's okay, I'll see you then. Okay, gotta go. Hi, Christina Hi. Beckett. Sarah Collins. You said on the phone you might have a story for me? Yeah, I read that piece you did on the new superintendent of schools. Yeah, the school board's one of my beats. So what do you got? Well, I'm a school social worker, and until recently, I was assigned to Cascade High School. How recently? Last right. week. I was transferred because I wrote a memo alleging the sexual abuse of one of my students by the school principal. What happened? Well, the school board rejected my claims. But since then, I've discovered that that same principal has a long history of coercing sexual favors from students. Are we talking about Gordon Powell? Yes. Do you have proof? I know what happened. I've talked to three different girls. Yeah, I think we might have a story. Let's see. Let's start from the beginning. Like I said earlier, we feel very fortunate to have an outstanding educator like Gordon Powell, ready and willing to step into the sizable shoes of Dr. Mintz. 
I'd like to thank you all again for coming here today, and there is a complete press release on the back table on your way out. Thank you very much. And for those of you who would like to take some more pictures, I'm sure these gentlemen will accommodate you. Thank you. Gentlemen? Over this way, sir. Great. Dr. Powell? <laughs> yeah, right here. Thanks again. Good. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, can I ask you a few questions? Of course. Sure. My paper is investigating rumor involving the sexual abuse of female students at Cascade High by Dr. Powell. Would either of you care to comment? Christina, what you're talking about was not a rumor. It was a character assassination, and Dr. Powell was completely exonerated by the school board. I understand that, but is it true that the school social worker who brought these charges against Dr. Powell was forced to transfer to another school? Well, under the circumstances, the school board felt the that... The individual uh, you're referring to was transferred, yes, but not for the reasons you imply. There was a question about her competency and, uh, frankly, her mental state. So you transferred her to an elementary school? I mean, if she were incompetent or unfit, shouldn't she have been fired? I won't dignify that with a comment. Just doing my job, sir. Well, because of the newspaper story, school board's decided to reopen the investigation. Yes. And until the new investigation is completed, Powell's been reassigned to administration downtown. We did it. Well, now, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. What do you mean? We got him out of that school, away from the kids. Yeah, but we still don't have a case. Unless someone comes forward, he's going to be cleared just like the first time. What about Cindy? Maybe now that it's in the papers, maybe you can get her to change her mind. No. I ran into her. She's in no shape to go through that again. Well, then we're back to square one. No, we're not. Do you think Pal now stands the chance of becoming school superintendent? No. <laughs> You're right. Let's celebrate. <laughs> So my father was a, um, a union organizer in the garment business. So every day growing up, he was in the middle of one fight or another. And he really pushed me through school. So when I told him I wanted to be a lawyer, he said, great. I mean, finally, somebody in this family is going to make some money. And then when I said that I wanted to be a labor attorney, he said I should get my head examined. Was he right? Well, it, it depends on the day. I mean, I'm never going to get rich doing this, but I have a lot of fun. How about you? Well, I'm never going to get rich doing this, either. Ever married? No. Came close a year ago, but no. What about you? Five times. Thank God I handled all my own divorces myself. Five times? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I, I'm, I'm just kidding. I, I just wanted to see your reaction. I, what? <laughs> no, I was married once. No kids. And since I have this rule about not dating clients, I have a very limited social life. What about when a case is over? Are you suggesting something, Miss Collins? No, counselor. I'm just asking you a question. Well, then I will uh, give you an answer when this case is over. Fair enough. Sarah? Hi, it's Janet. Listen, Powell's holding a news conference this afternoon at 4 o'clock. <laughs> here, Cascade. Yeah. Supposedly to clear the air. You might want to be here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, bye. Did you sign this? What is it? Petition to reinstate Dr. Powell. We have to present a united front. Look, when he's proved innocent, he will be back, Janet. Do you have a problem with that? No, I don't have a problem. Come in. How'd you do? Most of the teachers signed, and we should have the student petitions after lunch. What do you mean, most of the teachers? I told you I want 100% of them. Well, people like... Holly Bond and Archie White, they just wouldn't sign. Did you make things clear? Did you tell them what's in store for them when I get back? I tried. Then try harder. 
And remember, this is all your own doing. I don't know a thing about it. Yes, sir. started out to be a very sad day for me. I've devoted eight years of my life to this school, and it's sad to think I won't be coming to work here tomorrow. But when I'm given what was handed to me just moments ago, I can't be too sad. This is a petition calling for my immediate reinstatement as principal of Cascade High. Yeah. Signed by almost every teacher in this school, as well as over 200 students. Anytime you can get two students to do anything together, you know you're doing something right. <laughs> you have to admit, he's good. The guy's a snake oil salesman. Now, the school board has a right and a duty to investigate any complaints involving the abuse of our children, no matter how outlandish the allegation. I support that right. Our children are too precious, and our moral responsibility as educators is too great. I have nothing to hide. I welcome the opportunity to clear my name. And when that happens, I promise you, Gordon Powell will be back at Cascade High. Thank you very much. I wanted to tell you about Dr. Powell the day that you came to the club, but I just couldn't. I never told anyone about it. Why not? I didn't think anyone would believe me. Terry, you cannot ever think that. Sometimes I talk tough, but I was afraid. It's too bad I don't have any of those pictures. What pictures? Dr. Powell showed me some pictures of him with other girls. There was another man, too. He wanted to take pictures of me, but I just wouldn't. It just seemed so weird. Terry's willing to talk. Yeah, but is she strong enough to stand up and repeat it in court? Well, I think so. The DA said all we needed was one girl. Yeah, but that club that Terry works in hurts us. It becomes a credibility problem. You know what we need? Yeah, those pictures. That's our smoking gun. That's the kind of evidence that put Powell away. What about a search warrant? Never get one. Not enough evidence. Besides, even if we got one, where would we search? 
He showed Terry those pictures a year ago. They could be anywhere. For all we know, they could be dust. Why are you being so negative? I'm not being negative. I'm being realistic. If we don't get something definite on Pal soon, something that the DA can use, we're dead in the water. Dr. Horowitz, to your Hello, folks. Have some good news for Dr. you. Can they tell you how long you have to stay? Not long, I hope. They just want to make sure I'm okay. That's pretty stupid, huh? Real stupid. You're gonna be just fine now. Coach Gilbert? Hey, listen, I'm gonna leave you two alone for a little while, okay? Okay. Dr. Long, please dial extension 4923. Lloyd? Hi, how are you? Hi. I heard what happened, so I thought I'd bring these by. Cindy played freshman soccer for me. Well, that's very sweet of you. Well, I called you at your new school, and they said you were here. Well, why don't you come in and give them to her yourself? Well, I, uh... I really don't have very much time. I got my wife waiting in the car. Oh, well, I've never met your wife. Well, she's part of the reason why I'm here. We talked about it. About what? You want to talk with me here? Sure. Sally and I, Sally's my wife, uh, we feel pretty bad about what happened. I mean, here you are helping this girl, and now you're forced out, and people are talking about you like you're crazy. Well, you're not. It's just not right. Lloyd, do you know something about Dr. Powell? Well, one night I'm uh, working in my office, catching up on some paperwork. It's a Saturday. And I'm walking by the gym, and I notice that the lights are on. So I turn them off. And I hear this noise coming from the equipment room. So I go over to check it out. see these two people going at it. I mean, I couldn't see the girl's face, but the guy was definitely Powell. And he looked right at me. But you didn't see who the girl was. No, that's the whole problem. I mean, she might have been a student. She might not. I just couldn't tell. Did Pal ever say anything to you? Not one word. I mean, this guy is something else. I mean, for a while there, he was extra nice to me, talking about my family and stuff. But that's it. And you know what? There's something else. A couple of years ago at Cascade, we had this art teacher working. And one night we went out for a couple of beers, and he starts bragging about how him and Powell got a thing going with some of the girls in the school. Well, I think he's kidding, right? But then he says he had the photographs to prove it. And he used to teach there? Yeah, he quit. He's got a photography studio somewhere. So he's still around? Oh, yeah. His name is, um, DeVore. Larry DeVore. If anybody can put Powell away, it's him. So if it's the guy and he's willing to talk, we drive him straight to the DA's, we take a deposition. What if? Now, why are you being so negative? I'm just being pragmatic. Isn't there some leverage we can use? You start to sound like an attorney. God forbid. Oh, that's beautiful. Give me the phone. Oh, oh. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, don't move. Slip into that little sexy red thing, okay? I'll take care of some business. Larry DeVore? Hi. Frank Kearns. Uh, I'm an attorney. This is my client, Sarah Collins. What do you want? 
When's the last time you saw Gordon Powell? <laughs> Gordon Powell? And there's a blast from the past. Well, I understand that a few years back you took some photographs of Powell and some female students. Who told you that? Someone who's seen them. <laughs> I really don't know what you're talking about. We could really use your help. Yeah, I bet you could. This is all going to come out sooner or later, so you help us, we'll help you. Well, the truth is, I haven't seen Gordon Powell in years. And as for these photographs of these female students, like I said, I really don't know what the hell you're talking about. So unless you want some photographs taken, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Hmm. Nice guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Gordon. Yes. It's Larry. Yeah, I think we got a problem. I was in the neighborhood. Please leave. This is pleasant. I have some news for you. And a proposal. It hasn't been released to the public yet, but the school board's going to officially clear me again of any wrongdoing. Did you expect me to say congratulations? No. And I didn't come here to gloat either. No matter what the board says, a stain like this will never wash away. Eventually, I'll be reassigned to another school, but that's where my career ends. For that, I have you to thank. I think you should thank yourself. I have a proposal. I have work to do. You don't belong here. Really? You belong back at Cascade. I can make that happen. All you have to do is go back to the board Tell them you were having personal problems, that there was never anything to the rumors, and I'll take care of the rest. I can't believe you just said that. I'm trying to make the best of a bad situation for both of us. You hurt those girls. You don't even care. You robbed them of their self-confidence, their self-respect. Nothing's more precious than that. Can we get back to the subject at hand? You're pathetic. You can't be happy here. If I were you, I'd give my proposal some serious thoughts. You'll see it's the best solution for all concerned. You know, I didn't think about it at the time, but I think he was scared. Of what? Me. It's like he... I don't know. He wanted to stop playing this game with me or something. Well, if he went ahead and did what he asked, he could probably do what he said. <laughs> Is that supposed to tempt me? Well, I don't know. Does it? Oh, get real, will you? <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. Wow. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Listen, if I think of anything else, I'll give you a call, all right? All right. Bye-bye. Hey, Janet, come on in. Did you hear about the school board decision? Oh. I got a visit from the devil himself. Look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about a lot of things. What do you mean? You know why I didn't show up at the news comms that day? I didn't want to be seen with you. I guess under the present situation, that's not difficult to understand. Earlier that day, I signed the petition to have Powell reinstated. Why? Because I was scared, like everyone else. I mean, just in case he ever came back, I wanted to make sure I covered my rear. Well, you don't have to apologize to me. I want to. 
See, I'm not always as sure as you are about what's right and wrong, but I'm very proud of you. So are a lot of other people. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Do you remember him? He was a part-time art teacher. Larry DeVore? Uh-huh. He was a weasel. Why do you say that? Oh, he was like being an artist, teaching art. Somehow made it better than the rest of us. I mean, the guy was practically in love with himself. He uh, taught this photography class one semester, ended up with all these pictures of himself all over the walls. Did you say he stopped teaching, what, about three years ago? Mm-hmm, that sounds about right. So he and Terry weren't at school together at the same time? No. So Terry's probably never seen him. Okay, what are you getting at? Powell showed Terry pictures of himself, another man, and other girls. And you say that DeVore loves to have his picture taken, and apparently he still does. So Terry may not have seen Larry DeVore in the flesh, but maybe she's seen his picture. Hi. Hi. Can I help you? Yeah, I was thinking of having some photos taken. What'd you have in mind? Oh, nothing specific. I just, I needed a present for my boyfriend. Something kind of fun. <laughs> He's a very lucky guy. <laughs> I have something I think you'd like. You are a very beautiful young woman. Oh. <laughs> now that, that is a very hot package. And are you the photographer? I am indeed. I bet the camera would really love you. You think so? Yeah, I know so. I get a lot of modeling contracts. You know. Maybe we could work out a deal. Help each other out in this thing. Okay. That's him. You're positive? That is him. <laughs> You're doing great, Terry. Just take your time, nice and slow. After the first time, once or twice a week, about. He'd call me to the office, or he'd tell me to meet him at a certain time, or after school. So you say you can do all these things for me. You're gonna give me all this help and all. What are we really talking about here? Whatever you want. You wanna graduate with your class, don't you? I can make that all a lot easier. High school doesn't have to be all work. Oh, you smell good, Terry. And one weekend, he wanted to go away with me, but the last minute, he canceled. I think it had something to do with his family. How'd it go? She's a champ. Are you ready? It's not that bad. Just keep on talking. I'll try. How's it going with DeVore? Clock's running out, Larry. Oh, I'll wait for my attorney. Sit yourself, but I guarantee you the deal doesn't change. What was it again? Instead of multiple felony counts, including possibly statutory rape and pandering, you plead to several misdemeanors. And no jail time. You cooperate fully, I guarantee you a suspended sentence. What happens to Gordon Powell? If the tables were turned, do you think he'd ask what happens to you? Well, good old Larry's turning out to have a wonderful memory for names and dates. And he also thinks he has some old pictures that he and his attorney are holding out for an even better deal. So they'll definitely file a case? Well, they'll have the warrants issued as soon as the depositions are finished. Kiddo, real good. Did pretty good yourself. 
like I said when we first met, I knew it'd be interesting. <laughs> I could do without interesting for a while. Yeah? In that case, uh, how about dinner with me tonight? <laughs> what about your rule? What rule? That rule you have, no dinner, no client rule. You're not a client anymore. It was two long, often frustrating years from when Cindy Webster first came to my office before Gordon Powell was finally convicted on 24 felony counts. But it was worth it, because somebody had to stop him. <laughs>